And good evening and welcome. It is time for high school, high school softball and we are live tonight from Westlaco, Texas. I'm Scott Harrison and this is a K-West production. We are glad to be here via YouTube. And first time for me being at Westlaco East High School and we are ready to see a non-district matchup. It is the young ladies from Westlaco East, and of course they've had a good year so far. They are 4-3-1, and one, although 0-1 in district play, having lost Ed Koch Elsa 7-5. Meanwhile, they are hosting tonight the Porter Lady Cowboys, and so far on the season they are 2-3 and three and 0-1 and in district as they have lost to Vets Memorial. They are in district 16-5A. Well, the starting pitcher tonight for Westlake East, she hit a couple of the home runs in that game, and we are glad to see that she is back. She has had some injury problems. Of course, her twin sister also is a pitcher, is a pitcher for Westlake East. She took the loss in the Westlake game, and we're talking about our starting pitcher, Ariana Lefty Cabrera, and uh, she's known as Nana, and we are glad to see her out there tonight getting ready to go, taking her warm-up pitches right now. And of course, Brownsville coming to the plate in just a moment. Again, this is going to be some exciting action. Andrea Perez is up right now. And she, I believe, is a senior, or junior, I should say. And she wears number six, first batter of the game. Actually wears number 22. She is the shortstop. That is position number six, so we'll get all that straight. And we are going to be underway in just a moment. Look forward to a fun night of baseball. Lights are on, of course, already because the sun will be setting very soon. And we have our first pitch of the night, and so we are underway. And glad to be here. That's a ball. We know that Lefty out there, she can throw some strikes, can strike out a number of batters. We saw that at the Westlaco game. And next pitch is a ball also, 2-0, and oh, high. After that bad frigid week we had a couple weeks ago, we've had some really nice evenings for softball. By the way, there was supposed to be a boys game next door. I think they're doing a scrimmage right now, the Westlaco East boys, but that game had been canceled. So we are the only action here at the facility, very close to the border of Mexico near Nuevo Progreso and after three straight balls we do have a strike so maybe we'll see things change now Ariano throws the pitch and it will be fouled off right side first base dugout is where the visitors are from Brownsville Brownsville Porter they, of course, are in their blue uniforms, red socks, red helmets, white lettering. And that ball will be hit toward the short. Quick throw, and it's an out. Nice effort there, 6-3 for the first out of the ball game. And next, Ivana Cortez comes to the plate. She is the pitcher, wears number 12, a senior. Westlaco, of course, a lot of times in black uniforms, this time off white or grayish. See the black on the socks. So multicolor uniforms. First pitch is a ball, ball one. And that is going to be tapped towards short, easy out. So two quick outs. Pop to short. Andrea Zapata now coming to the plate. Third baseman, or is number 11. I believe she is a senior. 
So the shortstop very active so far for Westlaco on the early outs. Ariel Lopez this time popped out to the pitcher for the third out of the inning. So we have played a half inning and there is no score. Westco coming to the plate. Again, no runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. Before René Inuhosa became a business executive, he was a student at Westlaco ISD. He participated in UIL academics, designed the original Wildcats logo, was an all-state academic middle linebacker. He then played for the Longhorns, graduating with a business degree from UT. Now he's the Director of Strategic Development at Doctors Hospital at Renaissance. Westlaco ISD is home to some of the most prestigious graduates in the Rio Grande Valley. For René Inuhosa, WISD was the right choice. But now, we will see how Ariana Lefty Cabrera is going to do at her at-bats. Did good pitching in the top of the first. See if she has the same success as a batter. Remember in the Westlake game, crushed a couple pitches. I remember that one late in the innings, went over the 210 sign, almost hit the shed in right field. First pitch a ball. Again, Cortez, the pitcher, senior, but again, at least for this season, this is going to be her first start. Ball is high. Coach says, we talked to Leo before the game, we'll have to see what happens. Two balls. Actually, they're going to say, I guess it's 3-0 and now. Of course, you try to take base runners any way you can, and four straight pitches. Lefty is on. Victoria Vasquez, head coach of Westlaco. Enjoyed talking to Westlaco East coaching staff before the game. And we are going to have a designated runner coming in. Jose Alganis is now in. Obviously, you want to give your pitcher some rest, even though she's a very talented athlete. I believe she's coming off a shoulder injury, but that was to her right shoulder, her non-pitching shoulder. And that was one of the reasons they did not have that game against Westlaco. And that is going to be a long shot over the left fielder's head toward the wall. That is going to be a double. Runner does not score, stops at third. So we have runners in scoring position and no outs. Big hit that time for the catcher, number four. Piper Casadas. And now we have our third batter coming up, the designated player. So I say Batista is up. Ball one. And that ball tap foul. One and one. Shortstop, Ariel Lopez, who was responsible for two of the outs, participating at least in both of the first two outs, will be up next. And that is a ball, two and one. Sun is setting. Should have maybe daylight for one more inning at most. Strike. The Lopez, of course, a freshman. Her sister also on the team. Dion, a outfielder, a junior. That ball high. Count is two and two. Make it three and two.
And that will be a walk loading the bases. So Ariel going to have a chance to drive in some runs. Impressed with her effort when I saw her play over at Westlaco. Again, just a freshman. That ball is high. Ball one. Porter has actually played the team we broadcast West go against last night, Donna North, and beat them 15 to nothing. Mercy rule was used in that game. Now the ball will get away from the catcher, and a run will score. The other two runners advance to second and third. So first run of the ball game, wild pitch, and that is going to make it one to nothing as Cabrera comes in on a wild pitch. And Piper advances to third. And also... Going over to second base is Batista. And that is ball three. Keep in mind, this is the first start ever for this pitcher. So control can be a problem. Ball is high. And now it is three and one. They reversed it for a moment. Gave a strike instead of a ball, but now it is three and one. Bags could be jammed again in just a moment. And they will be. So Lopez walks. Fills the bags. Ambrosia Lynn, who can hit a home run, home run hitter, has that ability, is up. I believe Ambrosia has a home run at home here this season. Right fielder. She's a sophomore. And it is one and one now. No room for air for the pitcher with the bags jammed. One run already in. I know in the second inning last night at Wesica, what do we see? Something like 17 or 18 runs. So who knows? Again, two and one the count. That ball fouled. Two and two. Third baseman and first baseman playing in. Second base and short pretty much at normal positions. That ball will be hit towards second. Bobbled. And the runner will score. All the other runners hold. So Ambrosia gets to first. And we'll see what the ruling on that is. Single. Error. Single. Single. All right. We have a single on that one. So Ambrosia gets a single. So she'll get an RBI then. As Piper comes in, it is now two to nothing. West go east ahead. Marguerite, our official score right next to me, so very easy to argue with him tonight. But he, he says that he plays it by the book. Very strict on how he calls scoring. So we'll see. All joking aside, though, it's nice to have met him tonight. And again, ball two. Always appreciate the assistance of everyone in the press box. First time working in this press box. Of course, everybody's been very nice this season over at Westlaco. Dion Lopez, the older sister of Ariel at the plate. Center fielder number six. All righties in this lineup except the pitcher. That's why she's called lefty, right? Ariana Lefty Cabrera, just like over at Westlaco. They just have one lefty in the normal starting lineup their leadoff hitter, and a walk means a runner will be walked in. So, again, we have the third run of the ball game, and everybody moves up.
First pitch. Outside. Mia Silva, the third baseman. Number zero is up. So we have a 13 and a zero. Don't always see that in a lineup where both a zero and a 13 are two of the starting players. Three nothing the score again. Bag still jammed. 2-0 the count. Okay, change one and one. One and two now the count. Ashley Garcia will be next. Time. Again, West Go East, four, three, and one. Zero and one in district, non-district matchup tonight. Outside, two and two the count. And now we are going to see an error and throw and a runner come in. We're going to have an error on the throw. Who, who, who had the error? First base? First base. Okay, so B3. And another runner comes in. Now we have runners at second and third as Ariel Lopez just came in. And the score is now four to nothing. Silva still at the plate. Two and two the count. Ambrosia Lynn at third. And Dion Lopez at second. And meeting on the mound right now. Maybe trying to settle down the pitcher. Again, we don't want to be a broken record, but it is her first start. Would have had a different pitcher in there tonight, but injuries dictated otherwise. Gabby Gonzalez still a designated player in this game, but not able to pitch. Again, long discussion, and now infielders go back to talk to the pitcher again. Seems like this has taken a couple minutes, but I'm sure their head coach wants to make sure this does not get out of hand, if any way possible. As we saw last night, there is a 15-run mercy rule. We'll talk more about that if it becomes something that is relevant. All right, again, 4 nothing. West Lico East leads, still the first inning. Ball outside, full count, 3-2. and two. Still no outs. And that is going to be a walk. So the bags are jammed once again. Coming to the plate. Flex player. Ashley Garcia. Swing and a miss. Strike one. Most of the strikes so far have been called strikes versus swinging strikes against Westlake East. But again, that is swinging strike. Slaps the ball down toward the first baseman. Pitcher has to cover. Can't get there in time. And a run will come in. Another run will come in. And now we have runners at second and third. So two runs have scored. And Garcia winds up at second. But 
Magali now up. Second baseman, number nine. We've gone through the order now. Here in the first inning, still no outs. Magali Laraga of the plate. High. By the way, ball three. Emma Ramos, by the way, not batting tonight, but will be playing left field as a flex. And that ball hits the third baseman, and she's hurt. She's hurt. A run will come in. It'll be a single, but a hard shot to third base looked like it hit the third baseman on her arm, and she's in some pain. Top of the order. Again, seven runs in already. Lopez and Silva scored on that last play. Would that was Garcia? Was that a, was that a single or a double on that single engine that she advanced on the throw? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure from our score, the last play was a single and the runner advanced to second on the throw. Now as we look at the count, 3-1 again. Ariana Cabrera, the pitcher, she started off the game with a walk. And that's going to be a wild pitch. Runners advanced to second and third. And actually it was a ball, so it wouldn't be considered a wild pitch. It was ball four, so technically, I guess we just call that a walk. And the runners advance on the walk. So bases loaded again. And again, a conference at the mound. We've seen the bags jam several times tonight. 7 nothing again the score we're in the bottom of the first. Pitch is high. Piper Cesaris in, had a double, her first time at bat here in this inning. And that ball hit high, and it is gone. A granny there, grand slam for Bagger. That is huge. Piper clears the bases. First time this season we've seen a grand slam. And that makes the score now 11 to nothing. Again, nothing cheap about that. Dead center. Big shot there. I know we've seen at least two home runs when I was watching this team against Westlaco that I remember right off the top of my head by the pitcher tonight, Cabrera. But now... We see Piper, the catcher, tag that one. Big hit. 
And that ball will be lofted over the shortstop. So a single. Says a Batista on. She walked her first time, and now she singles. Ariel Lopez, who walked her first time here in the inning, is up at the plate. I think last night in that second inning for Westlake, we saw about 20 batters. Don't know if we'll get to that mark or not tonight, but still no outs. Strike one. Ariel, just a freshman. I know Westlaco last night started about three freshmen, so freshmen contribute quite a bit to the softball teams here in Westlaco. One and one the count. An unenviable position for the pitcher tonight. Being called in to pitch. What was that now? Balk? Throw down, okay. Two, three, four on that one. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Runner, though, it's second. Three and two the count. So try to get pick off the runner, but as we mentioned, runner was able to advance to second. And that is going to be a wild pitch, but still a walk, but because it was a wild pitch, the runner can advance to third. So Batista at third, Lopez at first, and Ambrosia Lynn, who singled first time up, is at bat. Runner trying to steal second. And gets underneath. No, is, is tagged out. Let's see what's the call. Caught stealing. All right. So that is the first out. Ariel Lopez caught stealing. That is high. Again, Ambrosia Lynn at the plate. Runner at third. Taps it foul toward the third base dugout. That is where Westlake East has got their players. 2-1 is the count. Three one. Again, designated player Batista at third. That ball is high, and Lynn will walk. Dion Lopez is next, the center fielder. She walked her first time up this inning. Now a steal of second, no double steal, third base holds. But we do have a stolen base. And again, Lynn on the steal. She takes a big lead off a of second. Ball one. Now they've got the runner at third in a rundown and is caught out, called out. So two outs. 
And both outs not made. And both outs not made at the plate. <clears throat> runner caught off third for that out, and of course also a runner caught stealing. Those are the two outs that were made so far by Wesleyco East in this half inning. Victoria Vasquez, as we mentioned, head coach of Wesleyco East. That is high. Full count, three and two. Again, two outs. And that ball tapped up toward right, and the right fielder has it for the third out. So a big half inning for Westlaco. Their first at bats, they score 11 runs. We played one full inning, and it is Westlaco East over Brownsville Porter, 11 to nothing. Before Carissa Renteria was a dentist, she was a student at Westlaco ISD. She was a cheerleader, played softball, and started college early through the dual enrollment program. She graduated from UTPA before earning her degree from the University of Texas School of Dentistry in Houston. Now she is Dr. Renteria, creating beautiful smiles at Professional Dental Group. Westlaco ISD is home to some of the most prestigious graduates in the Rio Grande Valley. For Dr. Clarissa Renteria, WISD was the right choice. So now we go to the top of the second. And Cassandra Nellis is up, the catcher. And she wears number one, a junior. Of course, again, these are the Lady Cowboys. Cowboys, big news yesterday with Dak Prescott signing what that $160 million contract. A lot of money guaranteed in it, I know that. But he'll be around for a while playing for the Dallas Cowboys. Missed a lot of last season. That was part of the demise of the Cowboys when he got injured. So that is a tapper down to second. And that is a 4-3 out to open up the top of the second. Up next is on the number, six, Annette Luna. number six, Annette Luna is next. And she is a junior. First baseman. And again, they are called the Cowgirls. Next pitch. That was a good remark just in here. They wear, they're called the Cowgirls, but they wear the colors of the Houston Texans who will probably have lost a lot of fans if uh, their quarterback leaves. We'll have to wait and see. I actually went to their final game of the regular season, saw the final game of Mr. Watt, J.J. Watt, maybe Deshaun Watson's last game too for the Texans. But the big story in that was the running back who had 250 yards. That is fouled down the line. It was Derrick Henry, rushed for 250 yards in that game, went over 2,000 for the season for the Tennessee Titans. That was in the Texans' final game of the regular season. Two and two, the count. And that is a swinging strike, so that is the first strikeout of the night for lefty as Luna strikes out. Kayla Morales now coming to the plate, number four. She's a sophomore. Plays center field. First and third playing in. That is called strike. Appreciate all the fans that have come out tonight. Fun way to spend a Tuesday evening. That is fouled back. <laughs> and 
And now we see some instructions given by the head coach of the Cowgirls. And that is a swinging strike. So the last two batters strike out. And we have played now one and a half innings. And it is the Lady Wildcats over the Cowgirls of Brownsville Porter. And this score 11 to nothing. The second, the second baseman, by the way, went to short since the shortstop went to pitch for Porter. And that's going to be ball one. The second baseman, Stephanie Chapa, she went over to short. And Anita Rodriguez came into second. Okay, number 10, Anita Rodriguez came into second for Brownsville Porter, so we've got all that strained out. And that is going to be a grounder to short. Throw is good. 6-3 out. So we do have one out. That was Mia Silva, by the way, just at bat. She had walked her first time up. This time, 6-3 out. And Ashley Garcia is up. And by the way, we just mentioned how the second baseman for Porter moved to short. So she had to show her abilities very quickly and was up to the task as she threw the runner out. That was Chop, of course, that made that move. 0-2 count right now on the batter. And that is 1-2. and two. So, so far, Perez... I mean, a little better control situation early in her stint than her predecessor on the mound. And that is going to be a swinging strike. Strike three. And now we're at the bottom of the order. The number nine hitter comes up. And that's going to be a strike. Again, Mangali Laraga up. One and one the count. And she will hit it down the third base line foul. Good, good uh, hit, good solid hit, but foul. It's going to say good wood on the ball, but they don't use wooden bats here, so that would be inappropriate. Metal bats. Again, six runs and two errors contributed to 11 runs by Westlake East in the first. And that is a ball, two and two. That'll be foul again. Count remains two and two. Again, if there are other games you're going to tonight, or I should say this week as far as baseball, it's supposed to be windy all week. So wind will be a factor as far as 
any outdoor sports, including baseball. That is fouled back. A long at bat. Top of the order coming up next. That will be hit toward right, and that is going to go deep. And the right fielder holds on to that. Nice catch. Looked like one of those ice cream cone catches. Just saw the top of the ball in the glove. So we have played two complete innings, and it's 11 nothing. West that go east over Brownsville Porter. Before Dania Pulido became an attorney, she was a student at Westlaco ISD. She was a member of the National Honor Society and a cheerleader. She earned her degree from St. Mary's University, then graduated from St. Mary's University School of Law. Now she is Dania Pulido, attorney at law for Texas Legal Services Center in Austin. Westlaco ISD is home to some of the most prestigious graduates in the Rio Grande Valley. For Dania Pulido, Westlaco ISD was the right choice. All right, we are going to the top of the third. And again, so far it's been six up and six down for Brownsville Porter. Nice pitching performance so far by Cabrera. Ariana, known as Lefty, of course, her sister, twin sister known as Righty. And... Her nickname is Nana, right? So Nana starts off this half inning throwing a strike. We try to give you all these little tidbits as best we can. And that is going to be a pop-up by Gabby Gonzalez. And that's going to be it. Who actually caught that? Pitcher. Okay, I want to make sure we got that right. Lefty got it. And remember, we talked about Gabby Gonzalez. She is the designated player. She was supposed to be the pitcher tonight, but due to injuries could not – do that and instead flies out to the pitcher for the first out. Estefania Chapa, who made that nice catch in right field for the third out of the last half inning, she steps to the plate for the first time, wears number 14. I'm sorry, she's the second base. It'll be the next lady, it'll be the right fielder. My apologies. Chop a second baseman and taps it back to first. So that is going to be 1 3. And again, that was a senior, Chapa. Okay, so Anita Rodriguez will now come to the plate. So is Rodriguez, what is position is Rodriguez playing? I just want to check my score. Second base, okay. And who's playing right now? Okay. Who is playing right? Oh, Gianna Avilas. Okay. No, right. And that, again, is a strikeout to begin and this half inning. So, again, we have gone through two and a half innings, and it is Lady Wildcats over the Cowgirls 11 to nothing. And again, Ariana, Lefty Cabrera is up. We are at the top of the order. And am I correct if they don't score, if they score four runs here in this half inning, the game is over, right? It'll be the mercy rule. And if they can maintain this lead, it would only go five innings. All right. Or 
15 after 3 and 10 after 5, and that is going to be a ground out to first, right, to open up the third inning. So Cabrera grounds out. And now Piper coming to bat. And again, she had the big grand slam, if I remember. That was huge. <laughs> and again, count is 1-0. and oh. Ball two. Piper says at us, and we'll see what she does this time up. Three and zero, oh. pitching carefully to her. You can understand why. And that's going to be ball four. And we have a new player coming in. All right, so we do have a new player coming in. This is for Ariel Lopez. All right, so Ariel Lopez is going out. And Osessi is going out, all right. And we have a stolen base. So I'm sorry, who's in again? Number. Okay. All right. All right. So I see that Batista's out. And right now, that is going to be a long ball caught by the center fielder. And again, that was by Michaela Perales, who just came in, the freshman, listed as an infielder, a long out to center. Again, Piper at second, stole a base. And now Ariel Lopez is up. So Batista was the player that was pulled, that appeared, the designated player. She walked and singled in the game. Flag still blowing, the wind pretty steady here. And that ball will be a single past the shortstop, and it will score a run. Piper will come in, wind up being a double. So Ariel Lopez, the freshman with a double. And is that correct, the seventh hit of the game? Seventh hit of the game. Looks like we have another substitute. So Abby Cabrera is coming in. Okay, Abby Cabrera coming into the game. Number 18, a junior outfielder, and she is in for Ambrosia Lynn. Am I correct? All right, and Ambrosia, of course, singled and walked in her two at-bats. And I guess what we see here is that it is a commanding lead. And Vasquez, Coach Vasquez, wanted to see some other players in because this game may only go five. We talked about the mercy rule here a few minutes ago. So that will be tapped to first base. And that is an out. And that is the third out of the inning. So one run scored here in the bottom of the third. And it is 12-0. Lady Panthers over the Cowgirls. Before Harlem Block raised the flag over Iwo Jima, he was a student at Westlaco ISD. There he played for the Panthers, won a championship, 
and learn some of the leadership skills he and seven other students used while serving in the Marines. Westlaco ISD is home to some of the most prominent graduates in the Rio Grande Valley. For war hero Harlem Block, Westlaco ISD was the right choice. So Andrea Perez, who's done a nice job pitching, only giving up one run in her two innings of pitching, I think one run and one hit in the two innings she's pitched, is now coming to the plate. And her first time out, ground out short to first. She's a junior, number 22. She started out playing shortstop before being moved to pitcher in the second inning. That's a swinging strike. Now the catcher for a moment. Don't know if it's an equipment issue going over to the dugout. Comes back very quickly. So Owen won the count. And that is fouled. Lefty quickly ahead of the hitter. Piper, of course, the catcher also had the grand slam. And that is going to be a swinging strike three. So the strikeout to begin the fourth inning. Top of the order up in this half inning for Porter. And Ivana Cortez is now up. She was the starting pitcher who got rocked in the first, but still playing. And she'll file that back. Not sure what position she's playing now. Do we know? She might be flex, okay. So we're trying to check on that. But she may be the flex player now after being pitcher in the first when she gave up six hits and 11 runs. Of course, also there were a couple errors, so they weren't all earned. And that is going to be popped up to second. And that is an out. So P4. Andrea Zapata now up. She popped out to the pitcher. One thing I do here around the community is, and I haven't been here that many years, but how West Lacoise's ladies softball program has come a long way. And again, it's been a long time, I think, since they beat West Lico, but almost had them in that game, what, a couple weeks ago. They lost an extra innings in eight innings, 10 to nine. And their bats were really alive in that game. We saw some good pitching, too, believe it or not, regardless of the score. And uh, when I talk to people around the area, other teams and other places, and, yeah, I, they did have a 5-0 lead. We were talking about that. I'm hearing them talk about that in the press box. Yes, in that game against Westlake, Westlake East had a 5-0 lead. It was the middle innings when Westlake started coming alive. And to be honest, early on, I really thought East was going to win that game, and I'm not just saying that. I'm talking as a person that was neutral looking at that game. I really, but then, again, later on, things just fell apart. And Westlake is a quality program, and they come back from things before. Of course, they have one loss so far, and that is to Harlingen in a district game. We're talking about the Lady Panthers of Westlake. One and two the count. And, of course, there's always mixed feelings when West Lico East plays West Lico in any sport. Some people like it, some people don't. Yeah, it's a rivalry, but some people say maybe we shouldn't have this rivalry anymore because they're not in the same district. Who knows? That's up to people to decide. I just enjoy watching the games. <laughs> yeah, and, again, them talking up here, they say regardless of what maybe the adults think, it's great for the kids. They love the rivalry when West Lico gets to play West Lico East. And I love the whole thing with football, with the water tower and everything. It's a great community, Westlaco. I, I actually live in McAllen, but I love coming over here. Enjoy the people. It's just a great place. And that's going to be fouled. Still one and two the count. And again, we appreciate the insights from the people here regularly in the press box at Westlaco East. They always do a great job over at Westlaco talking with all of them. But now tonight, uh, getting to see the other side of town and enjoying it very much. Foul back. 
So a big battle between the pitcher and batter this time. Again, Zapata at the plate. Top of the fourth. And that is going to be a ball. Almost hit the corner, but not quite out. Outside corner, two and two. So let us see what lefty is going to do this time. And that is going to be a shot to third base for the third out of the inning. So no runs, no hits, no errors, no one left on base. We played three complete, and it is Porter trailing Westlake East 12 to nothing. Before David Lozano started practicing law, he was a student at Westlaco ISD. He participated in UIL Athletics. He was a regional qualifier. He earned college credits through the dual enrollment program. After high school, he attended the University of Texas before graduating from St. Mary's School of Law. Now he helps people in need as an attorney. WISD is home to some of the most prestigious graduates in the Rio Grande Valley. For David Lozano, Westlaco ISD was the right choice. And coming up next for the Lady Wildcats, who's next? Joisa? Joisha Okanas. Okanas? Okanas is next. Joisha Okanas. Okanas is next. So she's going to be another substitute. And she's a substitute for Dion Lopez. Again, everybody getting a chance to play tonight. She's a junior, where's number 15? And that is a ball, ball one. Still pitching, Andrea Perez. That is high. It's nice to have light. I'm getting older. I wear glasses and everything, and I'm glad we can turn the lights on. I've actually been in press boxes, specifically in football, where they didn't want you to turn on the lights. And it's like, uh, can I see? Yeah, someone else said here it's crazy, but that wasn't me, but I'll, I'll <laughs> just pass that along. Need light, folks. So at least we know they pay the light bills here at Westlake. He's right, so we got the lights on. No, all joking aside, though, the reason I said that was the beautiful lights on the field. I'm, I'm being serious here now. Uh, you can very much see what's going on in the field. Nice job uh, here. These fields are good taken care of, too. I know we've had some tough weather, but both at Westlake and here at Westlake East, they've done a good job taking care of the fields. Yeah, and that, uh, telling me here in the press box, these fields have come a long way. Count is now 3-1. and one. And that is going to be a grounder to second, and that's going to be out 4-3. So... Mia Silva now will come to the plate. And it's possible that this will be the last time, right, for East to be at bat. If the score remains the same and they don't score any runs next inning or don't score more than two next inning, the mercy rule will come into effect. I believe they can score as many two runs in the next half inning. It, but if it's no more than 12-2 after the top of the fifth, this game will be over. It'll be the 10-run mercy rule. 1-1 one one the count. Again, Silva at bat. She's walked and grounded out in this game. That's high, two and one. Again, there was supposed to be a boys baseball game next door tonight, but that was canceled. So this is the only action on campus tonight at Westlake East. Three and one the count. That's going to be a walk. So Silva walks for the second time tonight. Walking up to the plate, the number 12, Emma Ramos. 
Emma Ramos now coming to the plate for the first time. I think she's batting for Ashley, right? Ashley Garcia. That's a ball, ball one. Adrian Perez in her third inning of work has only given up one run in those three innings. Popped up, slapped at it, and first baseman can't quite get to it in foul territory. Made a nice effort lunging toward it, but could not get it. So that is just a foul ball. One and one the count. We can see the gusts of wind when the door opens here in the press box. Have to grab the papers quick. So, oh, it's all right. People come in and out. I don't, I don't care if they come in or out. And that slaps at that pitch. And it's one and two. I'm used to grabbing my papers being blown around at different sports. I've never had to actually dive into the stands for them, though. have seen them take off into the space, though, notes and stuff. Did she just switch at the plate? She started out lefty, right, at this at bat and went righty. I thought it was just me. that I said maybe I've done one too many innings of baseball this week. But, no, she actually switched sides of the plate in the middle of that bat. That's un very unusual. Is it not? I, I'm even in softball. I think I've seen it in baseball sometime in all the years I've watched it, but not very often at that case either. Full count, three and two. You saw it in baseball or softball? One, and, and again, talking to our official score, saw it one time in baseball, he says. Someone switched sides of the plate during an at-bat. And she walks, so whatever or why she did it, it paid off. Magali Larago now up. And we have runners now at first and second. One out. And that's going to be slapped towards short. Shortstop throws it to first. Runners advance to second and third. But Magali is out. 6-3. But again... Runners now at second and third with two outs. And Ariana Lefty Cabrera, Nana, the starting pitcher, definitely a lefty. She is coming to the plate. I mean, even on the roster, she's listed as lefty. That's going to be a ball. I don't think we'll see her switch sides of the plate here. People humming a tune out there, I hear. And again, one thing I've noticed at all the softball games, I'm in the press box, so I'm not directly in the stands. I am. The windows are open, though. But we hear people like to yell things out, like to clap and cheer. And so that's good. It's good to see people back in the stands after a kind of dismal fall, especially at the professional level, seeing people play. Just saw cutouts of people in the stands. Not real people. Now we're seeing real people today, and that's great. That's what I like. Three and all the count. Now, okay, I've just been heard that at baseball here, they've been letting fans in spring training. I know, I think at the Cubs and White Sox games in Chicago, they've ruled they can have twenty to 25,000 fans. I think I just heard that. I saw that on ESPN yesterday. So that's a walk, and the bags are jammed, and there's going to be a designated runner coming in for lefty. And, all right, who's coming in? Casares, okay. Casares is in. Giovanna Casares is in. Okay, and that's, who's older sister? Oh, yeah, Piper's older sister. That makes sense. So Piper's older sister is in, a sophomore. Okay, well, there's a, I guess there was a mistake on the roster here. So Giovanni's a senior and Piper's a sophomore. They're just a made an error. Or junior? Who's a junior now? I'm just trying to get this straight because there's an error in the roster. Piper's a sophomore and Giovanni's a senior. Okay, I want to get that right. There was just a, Sometimes there was typos on 
on rosters, and we want to get that correct. So again, the bags are jammed. Two outs. And that is going to be a C&I single through center field. Nice job, and that is going to score two runs. Runner at third is going to be safe, so now we have runners at second and third. And that was Piper up the plate, by the way. So I guess her and her sister are both on now, right? Second and third. And that was a two-run. She got a single, got second on the throw. Yeah. Yeah, it was a single and advanced to second on the throw, but more importantly, got two RBIs. And now it's 14 0. Hey, do me a favor. Don't turn the scoreboard off right away. That way I can take a picture of it. All right. Thank you. And now Batiste, I believe, coming up, right? All right. She's a junior, plays first base and catcher, according to the roster. So I see Batista. Again, runners in scoring position. Two outs. She's walked, singled, and flied out to center. Ball rose to the plate. And we're hearing, as they talk here, the smart batter goes with the pitch, right? Right. All right. All right. Right. Ball is now past the shortstop. So two runs will come in on that single. So the sisters come in. Piper and Giovanni both come in. With the, the two runs coming in on that single, that is going to be it. And it is going to be a win for West Lake East over Brownsville Porter, the Cowgirls, 16 to nothing. And again, we see West Lake is now 5 3 and 1, a non district game. And congratulations to them. And two and four now is the record for Porter. And have a good evening.